which is it goes quite gravelly. Um, if you. Well hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today it's Sunday and uh, as you can see here I've just got the 65 which earlier on in the week I had a little bit of a problem with it because it was leaking coolant out. It was leaking from this tap at the bottom which had come undone. It was literally just dribbling a small amount out. Tightened that up with a pair of pliers the other day and we'll take this, we'll start this up, take this out. Um, recently I've just been literally using it doing the gallops every day and then earlier on in the week we've been muck carting, straw carting, literally just the same jobs which we do this time of the year and um, it's, it's sort of we're in winter mode really you know full on winter mode so we'll just give it a bit of a cold start this morning. It's been starting really well um, since I've sorted this little coolant problem out which was just a, just a leak really. I've checked it on oil, checked it on coolant. Hello Clave, you might, might want to stand back. Good. And I'll tell you a little job I've been doing earlier on in the week was uh, I came along and scraped all of this with this scraper tractor, the old McCormick. I'll probably whip, whip and do it today. I could really do with uh, some rain to just wash the, wash the concrete down now. So, done a, done a really good job. Dave, come on. We're not too close to the tractor. Yeah, so I'll go around to the right hand side and then I'll come back on the left hand side. Very soon I'll be cultivating this little piece of uh, fit land up here. This is uh, in a scheme. This is supposed to be a, like a bird cover mix. I'll pull that up with a cultivator. But before we do that, tomorrow we're picking up our subsoiler. Uh, it's a, the three, I think it's a three leg one and it's a, spol a spoldings one we went for in the end. So we'll go and pick that up and then we'll go around the fields, break all of the tram lines which need busting up and then I'll do the, and then we'll do the cultivating in the springtime. And then we'll probably still plough some fields which have to be ploughed to bury inorganic matter like after muck spreading for example. So we will do a little bit of ploughing and a little bit of cultivating as well. I've just stopped tractor there a minute whilst we're going around these gallops and uh, what have we got here? We have some little critters starting to dig into the sides of the material. Oh yeah there we are. We've got some there. It looks like uh, could be either rabbits or hares. There's not many rabbits about at the moment because if they burrow underneath here there's a membrane which we spent a long time putting in with uh, Alan Collier. If they burrow through that there's going to be holes in the membrane and then we're going to get weeds growing through which is going to be a nuisance so I'll have to get the, um, have to, have to get the rifle out at some point. Where have you been? Come on you little devil. So today it's Tuesday and yesterday we went off got the subsoil over there and uh, it's cold, it's freezing today so lost track of time these last few days. We picked up the subsoiler, which is just over there. We picked up the packer, which goes with the subsoiler. And we might put this on the back when we want to drill some turnips with the subsoiler. Um, it hasn't had a lot of use. You can see there's a few rust holes there, just on the back of the packer, which is where the rust got in, has gotten in over the years. But other than that, it hasn't been, I don't think, too bad of a purchase. So we're just going to have a look at the uh, subsoiler. Right, there's the rollers. They're just waiting for the hydraulic cylinder on that, just to finish uh, getting those repaired. And then on Monday, I was carting some straw bales in. We finished getting the rest of those. Um, kind of a bit more muck and then also yesterday we went and picked this up which is a Spaldings flat lift subsoiler um, so we went on a little road trip up to North Norfolk to pick this up from Cromer yesterday from a farm called uh, or a dealership Reynolds Motors Cromer uh, in Norfolk they, they sell uh, used machinery there's a really nice chap there we met and he's uh, helped us out with this so, so I've just put it on the back this morning we'll set it all up and um, take it in the field and see how we get on we have got depth control just over here so we can check how deep we want to go into the ground to crack the um, soil pan uh, which will be I think probably around 12 inches but we'll go a little bit deeper just to compensate so probably 14 inches but I've got a bar and a spade in the cab which I'll use to, to work it out. Yes it's uh, hopefully gonna be quite a good one today so we'll go and see how we can get how we get on ready. Alright so we're just out in the field now I'm just going to um, try and work out if there's any compaction along this side uh, how deep it goes uh, with a spade and then we'll um, get my tape measure just work out 
how deep it goes in there. And then on the back of the cultivator, on the subsoiler, sorry, there's uh, the depth wheel. We can just change the depth a little bit. And then afterwards, I'll just measure it um, with a bar and a tape measure to see how deep I'm going with the subsoiler to make, make sure I'm doing a good job. So we'll just work out how deep this compaction is, do these first few rows, set up the subsoiler and, and see how we get on. Just dug down with my spade, measured it with a tape measure and we've set the subsoiler at 13 inches, which is two inches compensation. So we'll see how we get on and uh, just try a few rows. Quite difficult just setting up the, making sure it's level, you know, really with the, with the ground. And I want the, the points tilted slightly, but not too much. So, Quite a difficult one to really to, to get right. Really. Okay, well, she took a little bit of getting going there because we were in a bit of a wet spot, so I pulled forward about 20 metres, and now, as you can hopefully see, she's doing a much better job. And we'll get out in a minute and just see what sort of depth we're at at the moment because I've set it up 13 inches. We should be getting 13 inches out in this ground, so hopefully that'll be plenty deep enough to get below the pan and also break up the compaction at the same time. So, lovely job. Hi. Um, you can see the wings, hopefully. Maybe if I zoom in on the camera, as, as we're going along here, they're, uh, it, it's lifting up the soil and cracking the compaction there. I don't know if you can pick it up on camera very well, but that's the idea really of, sub of the subsoiling and that's what we're trying to do. So, just to lift up the soil a little bit to break it and help and cr crack the pan. So this is really, because of all the modern machinery nowadays, the huge sugar beet harvester. Of course then, Jeffries, Massey Ferguson, our John Deere over the years, you know, going over and over the land all the time, packing the land down, um, has meant that you know we've got compacted land. We haven't really done much about it over the last ten years. It's just been left, you know, as it is. And we've, I've, this ground is really compacted. I can feel it in the tractor, and when I go up with the shovel with the spade, you know, you can feel it. So hopefully, this is going to make a huge difference to the yield to, over the next few years with our sugar beet, because this year. The, the sugar beet yield was a little bit down and we think it might be due to compaction. It's a little bit heavier here, she's just slowing up again. Come on girl, come on. Just really compacted I think, just really, really bloody solid. We've been going along quite nicely because it's light land and then when, when we hit a heavy spot, which is slightly wet as well, or wetter than the light land, we then come to a standstill. But uh, other than that it's not doing too bad a job, going along about the sheep. 3k, 3.5k. We've just dug a hole to try and work out where the compaction is and what sort of a job we're doing. So these first layers, these are pretty compacted. I'd say it's compacted all the way down actually until we reach this sandy layer, which is it goes quite gravelly um, if you if we start digging deeper down. And I don't want to go into the gravel because that's going to cause more problems. So there's a fine line between going too deep and doing the job we need to do with the compaction layer. So we, we really just want to be going down here on it, which is about the width of this metal bar, which I brought with me. It's literally the width of the bar. This is a, an 11 inch bar, and 11 inches is I think where the compaction is. So if we compensate another two inches, which is 13 inches, which is what I've got it set up on, um, that should be fine. So it's, it's a difficult compromise really. So anyway, we'll bury this up and we're getting rid of the compaction at the same time, so hopefully it's doing a good job. It's hungry land this, light, hungry, sandy, needs some organic matter, we need to buy you know, a couple hundred sheep really, ewes, get a, a decent, half decent suckler herd, mob graze turnips, things like that, and put muck and manure back into the land. That's the only way to really farm light land, I think, really like this, and just do spring cropping. Lovely job. We're just on the ends of these headlands here and it's just struggling the six large to just pull through here because it's so compacted at the ends of the rows. And we have made a little bit of a mess actually, just on the left, if you just look over there, it's a little bit of a bomb site. But now that we've been through with the subsoil, you can just see that water there, that, that's gonna start draining away because we've been through with the machine. And it's sitting on the surface because 
the sugar bee harvest has been going up and down here, it's been turning on the ends. The Frontier spray company, Agrifac spray, has been up and down. All of the machinery turns at the ends on the headlands. So it's that compaction which is keeping the water there, and that's, wet, and that's why it's wet over there. Now we've come onto the middle of the field, you can see it's bone dry, it's fine. Um, but it's still compacted, but not as badly as it is over there. So that's why we're doing the whole lot. Um, so even though we are making a mess a little bit on the ends, they'll dry up quicker now. They'll dry up certainly within the next few weeks. We'll come back and I'll have a look with the buggy at all of this and it'll just keep drying up now. So that means I'll be able to come in later on in springtime with the pottinger and just level those bits out and tidy it up. And they'll be drier, they'll be bone dry because we've been through the subsoiler now. So we are doing a good job, even though it looks like we've made a little bit of a mess in places, I think it will dry out a lot better now. So yeah, it's not too bad. And as you can see, I picked my AB lines earlier on this morning and I'm using the GPS, which is Green Star. And that's just with the FS, SF3 or SF2 or something like that. Uh, yeah, SF3 I think it is. It's just the um, just the basic GPS you get with John Deere. We don't pay the subscription or anything like that. And it's pretty accurate. It does the job for what we want to do. So it's within an accuracy of around three to four centimeters, which is plenty for what we need. So. So we're gradually coming towards the end of the day now. I've done half the field today and then tomorrow we'll finish off doing this other half. Uh, and then just near the gate, there's a little area where the um, sugar beet machine has left a mess on the, from the elevator. So I'll just tidy all of that up with the man or two in the morning. Um, and as you can see behind, the, sub, the spalding flat lift is doing a great job. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it, keep an eye on the wearing parts, any of the points if they go wrong. And uh, yeah, for the most part, it's doing a great job. So there we go, Spalding's flat lift is in the shed. There we are. Brilliant first day with it, using it on pit field. We'll finish the rest of the field hopefully tomorrow. And then I've got another one, uh, Hill House, to do, which is uh, first got to be muck spread. So I'll get the ATS before long to do the muck spreading. And if you just have a look in the middle of the subsoiler, the previous farmers welded a plate on there. I think it's because they used to have a seed box on there. So maybe we could put a seed box on and drill our cover crop turnips just after the barley in the summer when it's sort of dry and compacted after harvest. That would be sort of ideal time or an, an ideal time to do the subsiding. So leave a comment about that in the comment section down below. And thanks for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Give it a thumbs up and I will catch you on the next one.